Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police respond to a deadly shooting overnight. We will have all the details. Thousands more American troops heading to the Middle East amid tensions with Iran. I'm ABC's Serena Marshall with what the Pentagon is now saying about plans to withdraw from Iraq coming up. And live cam giving us a peek outside on your Tuesday morning, hoping those chances of rain are still in the forecast. We'll check in with Mike. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, January 7th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. It's a little bit cool out there today. It is, and for you Mountain Cedar sufferers, if we could load up a big bus and take you somewhere else for two or three months, we would do it. No, we wouldn't because we want you to watch our morning show. Oh, well, that's too But true. you could live stream it. So there's that. Yeah. Okay. So what, what about the Mountain Cedar? Are we going to get any uh, rain? Is it going to wash it on out of here? We, probably not soon enough for anybody because there's no rain in the next couple of days. And, of course, yesterday's Mountain Cedar reading, we'll show you that in a second, went sky high. And then we had the front move through overnight. So... Yeah, it's probably going to be even higher later on today. But shaking those trees. Unfortunately, uh, we like I said, we did have the front move on through here. The wind has shifted around, and it depends on where you live as far as uh, what effects you're getting from this front. We're at 52 degrees here in town, 48 Bolverde, and then mid-30s uh, out in portions of the hill country. And further out to the west, even some freezing temperatures, 27 in Ozona. So some of this cooler is going to continue to work on in here. I think we're going to be going down toward uh, mid to lower 40s, so closer to a normal low temperature when it's all said and done this morning as this cooler air comes on in here on these uh, winds. We do have a little bit of a wind chill out there in portions of the hill country and wind is out of the north at a roughly uh, say 10 15 miles per hour, maybe a little bit gusty at times and then it does tend to settle down. So this is not going to be a huge windy day, if you will. Winds aren't going to be a big deal. Um, breezier this morning and then kind of uh, easing up and shifting around to the southeast later on this afternoon. But of course, with those winds overnight, you know, that's going to be it will have been shaking up the uh, mountain cedar trees. Twenty eight thousand is yesterday's reading. Anybody want to take any guesses what it's going to be later on today? Uh, I'm going to pass. OK, we'll just 32, pass on 32, that right here, 32, 35, 35, right here, 35. <laughs> we got our auctioneer with the badge over there. 43 <laughs> degrees is what I'm going for here in town later on this morning. So you want to grab a jacket and then later on this afternoon, not as warm as yesterday and uh, at or slightly above normal, but a fantastic day, 65 degrees. Yes, we are still looking at some rain chances later on in the week and still looking at a fantastic weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is the auctioneer, Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, good morning, Mike. Good Good morning, everyone at home and those hoping to head home soon. Hopefully, uh, everyone will be able to reach their destination this morning incident free. Right now, as you take a look at the road at the map right here for San Antonio, no problems. We're going to switch over to Transguide. 281 at Hildebrandt, north and southbound lanes running smoothly through that area. And 35 at FM 1103. Not too many vehicles out there, but it's still very, very early right now. I-10 closer to here in the downtown vicinity right there at the infamous fine silver curve. You see no problems. There's that tractor trailer safely makes it through that turn heading out westbound on I-10 and then 10 right now. Everything looking pretty good. Mark. Thank you very much, Marcus. New this morning, one man is dead following a shooting in an apartment complex on the northwest side. Just before two this morning, San Antonio police responded to the 8800 block of Cinnamon Creek. According to police, a witness heard some noise coming from the parking lot and eventually found a 30 year old man dead. We don't have a lot of details right now on how all this happened. Detectives are still investigating. No other injuries have been reported. This morning, arson investigators are looking into what caused a fire at a duplex on the west side last night on Simplicity Drive. The home is near Marbach and Ingram Road. A battalion chief on the scene says that he knows of at least four reports of fires at the home. A person found at the scene is also raising suspicion since investigators have dealt with them multiple times as well. Neighbors say they have seen several people coming in and out of the home. No injuries were reported. Officials did say the property is worth $85,000 and about $45,000 of damage was done. Funeral services will be held today for fallen San Antonio ISD officer Cliff Martinez. He was hit by suspects in a car and killed while working off duty as a security guard last month at an IHOP on the southeast side. Services are set for 1015 at Community Bible Church. That's at 2477 North Loop 1604 East. The service will include the retirement of his badge and 21 gun salute and an Eagle helicopter flyover. Any morning headlines as thousands of U.S. troops are being deployed into the Middle East following the killing of Iran's top military commander. The Pentagon was forced to confirm Monday that despite a letter that was sent to the Iraqi government outlining the U.S. withdrawal, 
there are no plans for American troops to leave. A Pentagon official says it was a draft and it was a mistake to have been sent out. ABC's Serena Marshall leads us off with the latest. American soldiers leaving home, landing in the Middle East. 3,500 troops from the 82nd Airborne, six B-52 bombers deployed to the region, bracing for retaliation after the U.S. drone strike that killed Iran's top military commander, General Qassem Soleimani. Millions of mourners turning out for his funeral. ABC's Martha Raditz in Tehran. There was weeping on the street, but that was mixed with anger and a real call for revenge. President Trump continues to defend the killing of Soleimani, telling Rush Limbaugh. And we had a shot at it and we took him out. And we're a lot safer now because of it. Now we'll see what happens. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff also defending the decision to kill the Iranian general, calling the evidence compelling. Did it exactly say who, what, when, where? No. But he was planning, coordinating, and synchronizing significant combat operations against U.S. military forces in the region, and it was imminent. General Mark Milley also saying there are no plans to withdraw American troops from Iraq after a draft letter was accidentally circulated that indicated troops were moving out. Milley saying it was never meant to be made public, adding nobody's leaving. But comes as Iraq's parliament took a non-binding vote to kick U.S. troops out of the country, angry the killing of Soleimani occurred on their soil. The U.S. government and NATO have also now announced a pause to fighting ISIS, so American troops can protect their own at U.S. military bases in Iraq. But that means only the Iraqi army is there to fight ISIS if the caliphate chooses to go on the offensive. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. Twenty veteran California firefighters are heading to Australia to help out with the deadly wildfires there. The Angeles National Force crew packed up, headed out from Los Angeles Monday. Their deployment is expected to last at least 30 days. At least 24 people have died from the Australia fires, and more than 2,000 homes have been damaged or destroyed. 437, 52 degrees. Still ahead, Wheel of Fortune host Pat Sajak talks about the scary moments when he collapsed during his recent health scare. Spurs come away with a big win against one of the best teams in the NBA. We will have a wrap-up next. And Live Cam giving us a look outside. Yeah, allergies have been bad for all you cedar fever sufferers and it could be a little bit worse. So you may want to take a little, what is it called? One of the little pills, the Benadryl? Yeah, a, a good antihistamine. Any antihistamine, just, just take them. DeMar DeRozan had 25 points and the Spurs had a season high 19 three-pointers to beat Milwaukee. 126-104 last night, snapping the Bucks' five-game win streak. David Sears has a wrap-up of the big win. The Bucks average 120 points a game. The Spurs held them to 104. Giannis averages 30 points a game. The Spurs held him to 24. Everybody in this locker room agrees this is pretty much their most complete game, especially when you consider the competition of the year. Great team win uh, overall. Uh, I think... You know, everybody that got to uh, get in the game today, you know, came out and, and fought hard and, you know, executed the game plan uh, on the offense and defense end. We were able to do some good things in the first half and, and weren't able to um, maintain that throughout a, a second half. So for us to turn around two days later and, and, and put 48 minutes together um, like we did and, and hold a, a team like that to 104 points, it's, it's definitely signs of us growing. It's big, confidence building, letting us know, you know, we could compete with the best teams um, in this league. You know, we just got to carry it over, you know, um, and accept the challenge every time we play against a, you know, a, a great team like we did tonight. Matter of fact, just anybody, not even a great team. A huge win, especially when you consider they're off on a four-game road trip that starts in Boston on Wednesday with the Spurs. David Sears for Good Morning San Antonio. As David said, next up, Spurs head to TD Garden to face off against the Boston Celtics. That game is set for tomorrow night's at six o'clock. A great win. And needed it. I think all of us needed that collectively. And I think he said it shows that they are starting to gel and they're making some progress. That was a good way to put it. Right now it's 442, 52 degrees. Still ahead as your selection begins in the Harvey Weinstein case, the disgraced movie mogul could be facing even more charges. Just ahead, Will of Fortune host Patch Sajak talks about his health care and the scary moment when he collapsed.
Mm -hmm. Welcome back. It is almost uh, 445. Wheel of Fortune host Pat Sajak and his daughter are speaking out about his health scare and the terrifying moment he collapsed while she was by his side. ABC's Paula Ferris has details in your GMA First Look. Maggie Sajak. In this morning's GMA First Look, a big surprise on last night's Wheel of Fortune. We knew Vanna White would be filling in for Pat Sajak as he recovered from his recent medical emergency, but now we've finally solved the puzzle of who would fill in for Vanna, and it was none other than Pat Sajak's daughter, Maggie. You probably thought about life without your dad. That's how serious things were. It definitely does hit you in those moments. You appreciate the person even more. GMA sat down with Sajak, now on the mend, and his daughter to talk about her big debut and that scary moment that sent him to the hospital. Your dad told me that he's thinking about hanging him up, hanging up the cleats in maybe two to three years. What do you think about that? They'll reveal all in our exclusive interview coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Paula Ferris, ABC News, Orlando. Holidays are over, and if you made it to 2020 debt-free, travel should be on your mind if you want to take advantage of deep discounts. Sounds good. In today's Consumer Watch, Melissa Rainey has a look at the top destinations this month and why experts say your wallet may be happy, too. Escaping the winter blues. That's what a lot of us will be doing this season. January is a great month for travel, and that's often because there's fewer crowds and more affordable pricing. The top five destinations for January show that most of us are chasing warmer temperatures. That's based on TripAdvisor flight data based on average domestic round trip economy fares for one person. Sin City is at the top of the list. A round trip to Las Vegas in January will cost you an average of $211. It's certainly a popular destination for New Year's Eve. And of course, people looking to kick off the year, maybe get a few extra bucks in their pocket to enjoy the casinos. Meanwhile, three Florida cities also made the list, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, and Miami. TripAdvisor says round trip airfare to all three Florida destinations average under $250. Honolulu took the fifth spot in the survey with round trip airfare averaging about $507. It won't be as crowded. Many folks already maxed out their budgets over the December holiday time frame, so you can really take advantage of beaches and dining and everything that Honolulu has to offer. For Consumer Watch, I'm Melissa Rainey. Big trips. Planned this year? I actually am going to Nice, France for the first time in my life. That's a big trip. That's a very big trip. Looking forward to it. Should we notify the French that you are going to be invading? Shh, it's a secret. Okay. I'm a mouton. I'll fit right in. <laughs> okay. I think you might. 447 right now. <laughs> Let's check on the roadways. How's it looking out there, Marcus? Well, right now, still looking pretty good. Now we do have a little bit of construction out there. Highway 90 Medio Creek area that's going to be out there by 1604. As you see, uh, some construction still on the access road. Main lanes, though, still looking pretty good at this point. Let's move to some other areas like 281 410 up there by the airport. Uh, very little traffic on 410 and on those connector ramps between 410 and 281. 281 in Grayson, closer to downtown. As you see, north and southbound lanes looking pretty good. And with all the lighting there in that area, it's a very silvery picture. So, no, it's not Christmas. Uh, we're past that date, uh, but uh, it is a pretty good shot with all the new buildings, new construction going on just uh, east of the 281 Grayson area. It's almost like it's got sepia tones. To Something, it. yeah. Yeah, it does. That's exactly what it looks like. Kind of cool, though. Got breezy last night. Yeah, the front moved on through uh, late last night, and winds have been there. It's not like it was, you know, this big... Gust. What am I trying to say? Yeah, not overly it, gusty or anything like that. Flags are flapping, but... Yeah. Right, and, and it's going to be breezier this morning. Yeah, what is being said at this desk? I'm like, I've been off too long. I'm not following. Flags are flapping and yeah. winds are something in. Yeah. And Flags are flapping and ducks are ducking and... Wow. That too. And my cedar tree is getting shooken up. So, uh, yeah, 28,000 <laughs> is the uh, current reading, and I can imagine it's probably going to be... I would guess into the 30s. Oh, by the way, the French uh, have notified Leslie that they have surrendered before she even arrives. <laughs> <laughs> Wise <What>? choice. <laughs> anyway, uh, yesterday we did have a few clouds hanging around here, and uh, we're going to have a lot of clear skies today, but beautiful, beautiful picture out there, and it was a gorgeous day yesterday. It's going to be another fantastic sunrise this morning. We don't have any visibility problems, and of course yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, 
We had a little bit of fog around the area, especially off to the east, but the wind is enough uh, this morning that's preventing any fog from forming up. Depends on where you are. We've got almost uh, basically a 20 degree difference from the hill country over to the southeast. Floresville 53, but then 35 right now in comfort, 52 here in town, and even uh, freezing temperatures in 20s way, way out in northwest portions of the hill country. This cooler is going to continue to kind of push its way down in here. Very, very dry air as well. And as a matter of fact, uh, you want to watch it as far as the fire danger today because it's just breezy enough and the dry air is going to continue to move on in here. And so that's going to uh, just put low relative humidities way, way down today. So be very, very careful if you're uh, doing any burning outside. Wind is out of the north at about 15, um, maybe close to 20 miles per hour at times, but it's not an overly windy morning and the winds will be uh, kind of easing up later on today. A lot of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. There's uh, the moisture that produced some of those high clouds yesterday, but now this darker shade indicates that drier air. So that's why we're going to have some beautiful blue skies today. Now, as far as the, uh, the wind, the humidity, very dry air, like I said, throughout the rest of today, but even by later on tonight, Winds are going to start to uh, sort of shift around out of the southeast. Now, despite that, it's still going to be a cold morning tomorrow. Then the humidity is going to work its way back in here throughout the day tomorrow. And by dinner time tomorrow night, we're going to start to see some clouds move on in here and maybe a couple of sprinkles overnight into early Thursday morning. This computer model through most of the day, well, obviously today and most of the day tomorrow is fairly sunny. And then the clouds do thicken up. And uh, like I said, early Thursday morning, there could be a couple of little uh, sprinkles showers out there and then we have another front which is going to be moving on through here uh, looks like late on Friday but as that approaches we're going to be seeing things sort of get churned up a little bit move back one shot here there we go uh, things are going to start to get agitated by Friday and that's going to give us a better chance for some showers on Friday as well as a couple of uh, thunderstorms uh, 62 degrees today at noon sunny skies good looking day it's not going to be as windy winds are going to be sort of easing up five to ten miles per hour and so it's starting to shift around out of the southeast throughout the day 65 for high temperatures so just above normal and plenty of sunshine out there. It's going to be cold tomorrow morning. We'll make it down into the 30s and then throughout the afternoon, late afternoon, the clouds are going to be increasing. So mid 60s, good looking day tomorrow. Then cloudy skies tomorrow night. A couple of showers early on Thursday. Looks like Friday, especially in the afternoon, a couple of showers and even a thunderstorm or two. Most of the stronger activity would be further to the northeast of us, but uh, we might have a couple of stronger thunderstorms on Friday and then another just prize winning weekend. Um, no complaints? Mm -mm. No, no. Thanks, Mike. 452, 52 degrees. Our actor Joaquin Phoenix is on a crusade to have all award shows go vegan. <laughs> is right he now. joking? Pick three numbers, 796, <laughs> Fireball 0, Daily 4, 9408, Fireball 8. You know, he's Joker. I get it. Okay. Cash 5 numbers, 469, 2022, Texas 2 Step 23, 15, 31, with a bonus ball of 19. About five till right now, more charges could be coming for disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein. And the big name actor wants all awards show to go vegan. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. As the Harvey Weinstein sex assault trial starts in New York, new rape and sexual assault charges here in Los Angeles, says L.A. County District Attorney Jackie Lacey. We believe the evidence will show that the defendant used his power and influence to gain access to his victims and then committed violent crimes against them. Weinstein accused of assaulting two women at a hotel in 2013. If convicted, he faces 28 years in prison and other cases against Weinstein are still under investigation, so he could be looking at even more charges. Jury selection in the New York trial is scheduled to start today. Ratings for the Golden Globes, pretty solid, down just 2% from last year. 18.3 million people watched Ricky Gervais host and the movie 1917 win Sunday night on NBC. And while ratings were pretty steady, especially considering recent slides for other award shows, that's still an eight-year low for the Golden Globes. Speaking of the Golden Globes, Best Actor winner Joaquin Phoenix is on a crusade to have all award shows go vegan, as the Golden Globes did Sunday night. Animal agriculture is the third leading cause of climate change. It uses 70% of the water. It pollutes the most water. The statistics 
are staggering. He called on Sunday's Critics' Choice Awards, next week's SAG Awards, and the Oscars to all follow suit and ditch the meat. And happy birthday to Katie Couric. The veteran journalist is 63 today, while Avengers star Jeremy Renner is 49. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Less than three minutes till five, 52 degrees. Could gas prices be affected by what's going on in Iran? We're going to take a closer look at that coming up. Hyundai and Uber announced a partnership to make flying taxis. We'll tell you more about how they work. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police respond to a deadly shooting at a northwest side apartment complex. We'll have the latest details coming up. Iranians buried the top general who was killed by a U.S. airstrike. We'll have the latest. That front has moved through. We've got breezy conditions here in the San Antonio metro area. Mike is standing by. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, January 7th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Today, as I think, is the official day where all kiddos are back in school. Keep that in mind. Marcus was just talking to me and reminding me, you got to look out for all the school zones. And you have to make sure you look out for the little kitties, the kiddos who run in front of their car. That's right. If you see what looks like smoke out there, it's not. It's not the cedar, cedar pollen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike? Yeah, some folks have been posting video of that stuff. It's just, it's amazing. So, uh, yeah, we did have the front move through overnight. Temperatures, uh, you want, if you're not out the door yet and going to be waiting um, to, say, send the kids out later on this morning, make sure they, they do have jacket because temperatures even here in town are going to continue to drop down. As you can see, we're at 50 right now. Hondo's 42 and then got some 30s out there in parts of the hill country. And the wind is coming in here out of the north to northwest. And so that's going to continue to pull in uh, some of this cooler air. As a matter of fact, Last hour we were at 53 or so. We're down to 50 right now and we'll continue, like I said, to uh, drop down. Winds out of the north at 12 miles per hour, so you know what that means as far as those mountain cedar trees are concerned. Some of the uh, other readings around the area right now, it is still milder down to the southeast and then about 20 degrees cooler off to the northwest. Kerrville in the, uh, the 30s and then some freezing temperatures way out there in far northwest portions of the hill country. And like I said, again, all this is going to continue to move on in here. So jacket's a pretty good idea uh, this morning. And then later on today, it's going to be one of those days you get in the shadows, might be on the coolish side. Wind is not going to be a huge factor later on. It's out of the north at uh, 10, 15 miles per hour. And then, as you can see, easing up in portions of the hill country. And that's going to be... The situation later on with the wind continuing to sort of ease up later on this afternoon, but it's probably done its due overnight as far as mountain cedar is concerned. This was yesterday's reading. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out later on this morning, and I would venture a guess that it's going to be even higher than that. We have plenty of sunshine in store today, breezy this morning, and then mid 60s. Cold start tomorrow. Mid 60s, then the clouds move in. Very nice day, but uh, the clouds going to continue to kind of thicken up uh, tomorrow, and we will have a couple of uh, rain chances on Thursday. Warming temperatures Thursday and Friday. Weekend looks fantastic. Another great weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, Mike, right now things still look great for folks out there. This is a uh, trans guide 35 at 1604 North and South on lanes. No issues and then 37 at Jones here in the downtown vicinity. Traffic still moving with no delays at this point. No obstructions there. 21 at Winding Way North and South on lanes running freely all the way to the downtown area. 21 at Grayson. Mark Leslie. Thanks, Marcus. New this morning, a man is in custody after police say he crashed his motorcycle on the west side. SAPD says it happened on Highway 151 near Petrenko Road just after 11 last night. When police arrived on the scene, they found the 30-year-old man trying to walk the motorcycle off the road following the crash. Police say the man was detained for possible DWI. No other injuries were reported. Iranian state television says 35 people have been killed earlier today. 48 others hurt in a stampede that erupted at a funeral procession for a general slain in a U.S. airstrike. Iranian General Qasem Soleimani is being buried today. Soleimani killed last week in an airstrike ordered by President Trump, who said it was to thwart an imminent terrorist attack. The funeral for Soleimani drew a crowd said to be at least a million people in Tehran. Meanwhile, the leader of Iran's Revolutionary Guard has threatened to, quote, set ablaze places supported by the United States, including Israel. Meanwhile, tension with Iran could impact your wallet. Gas prices haven't gone up much yet, but experts say that may not last. Oil prices are already feeling the impact, rising since the U.S. strike that killed a top Iranian general last Thursday. 
But since Iran is not a major exporter of crude oil, prices haven't been impacted as much as they could if other Middle Eastern countries get swept into the tension. If global oil shipments are disrupted, you can expect prices to increase. It isn't all bad news for consumers, though, in America. Prices at the pump aren't as susceptible to increases this time of year because the demand isn't as high as it was leading up to the holidays. Jury selection expected to get underway today in Harvey Weinstein's New York trial. The disgraced movie producer accused of raping a woman in New York City in a hotel back in 2013 and forcibly performing a sex act on another woman in 2006. He maintains any sexual activity was consensual. Yesterday, prosecutors in Los Angeles charged Weinstein with sexually assaulting two women in 2013. On the road to the White House, some candidates have spent more than a year on the trail so far. But according to new polling, Iowa, the crucial first caucus state, is still up for grabs. CNN's Nadia Romero explains. Just last month, Mayor Pete Buttigieg was the clear frontrunner in Iowa, but a new poll shows there's a three-man tie, Buttigieg, Biden, and Sanders. So Elizabeth Warren is trying to gain more momentum. She just picked up a key endorsement from a former Democratic challenger. Joe Biden and Michael Bloomberg are also picking up big-name support as well. Despite tours across the countryside and countless campaign stops, there's no clear front runner in Iowa. What I'm doing is working my heart out as our team is to make sure that we have a good result, and I think we will. According to the first qualifying poll of the new year, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, and Pete Buttigieg hold a three-way tie at 23 percent. Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar round out the top tier. We are seeing people show up everywhere. Whoa. In a field with more than a dozen Democratic contenders, Sanders Sanders dominates the money game, pulling in nearly $100 million in 2019. The reason our campaign is the strongest campaign is because of the grassroots support that we have, which is you. Another key measure of a candidate's viability, endorsements. More than 30 members of Congress and governors back Biden. The most of any Democrat in the race. Warren is attempting to heat up her cooling campaign after a disappointing fundraising quarter and slumping poll numbers. The Massachusetts senator received a key endorsement from a former foe, Julian Castro. That's why I'm proud to endorse Elizabeth Warren for president. While candidates court Iowa caucus goers, Michael Bloomberg is waiting in the wings. You're just going to have to have somebody that can beat Donald Trump, and that is not going to be easy. The billionaire is skipping the first four early contests and focusing solely on Super Tuesday. Only time will tell if the unconventional strategy spells a win to the White House. A big blunder by Andrew Yang's campaign. His name will not appear here on the primary ballot in Ohio. Ohio has about 186 delegates. That's about 7% of what a candidate needs to win that nomination. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero reporting. 507, 50 degrees. Still ahead, Hyundai and Uber unveiling what they call a flying taxi. We'll explain what it's all about. And next, Krispy Kreme says as a way to help you keep your New Year's resolution to eat better. And live cam giving us a look outside. So happy to have you with us on this Tuesday morning. An update on traffic and an update on your forecast. The weekend's looking beautiful. Your time now, 11 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, Krispy Kreme thinks its new product will help keep your New Year's resolution to eat a little bit better. The donut chain announced it's adding mini donuts to the menu permanently. Smaller donuts went on sale nationwide Monday. Krispy Kreme says the original glazed mini has less than 100 calories. There are also smaller versions of Krispy Kreme's chocolate iced glaze, chocolate iced with sprinkles, and strawberry iced with sprinkles. Customers can get a free mini donut every Monday this month. Pier 1 may be getting ready to file for bankruptcy. Shares of the home furnishings chain dropped nearly 17% Monday. In five years, the price has gone from about $300 a share down to just five. Wall Street reacted harshly to the company's plans to close 450 stores, which would be about half of all of its locations. Pier 1's latest quarterly report, in-store sales 11% lower than the previous year. The company says closing hundreds of stores is a reaction to the current shopping habits of consumers. Boeing now says it will reassign as many as 3,000 workers who had been building the 737 MAX jets. Production of the still-grounded plane is being suspended in the next few weeks. Boeing's biggest supplier, Spirit Aerosystems, which makes parts for the MAX, now says it's looking at voluntary furloughs. 
512 right now, 50 degrees. Still ahead, if you're a fan of the movie Knives Out, you're in luck. We have details on a possible sequel that's in the works. And next, more on a new kind of battery that can keep your cell phone charged for up to five days. It's tough to quit smoking. Cold turkey. So Chantix can help you quit. Slow turkey. Along with support, Chantix is proven to help you quit. With Chantix, you can keep smoking at first and ease into quitting. Chantix reduces the urge so when the day arrives, you'll be more ready to kiss cigarettes goodbye. When you try to quit smoking, with or without Chantix, you may have nicotine withdrawal symptoms. Stop Chantix and get help right away if you have changes in behavior or thinking. Aggression, hostility, depressed mood, suicidal thoughts or actions, seizures, new or worse heart or blood vessel problems, sleepwalking, or life-threatening allergic and skin reactions. Decrease alcohol use. Use caution driving or operating machinery. Tell your doctor if you've had mental health problems. The most common side effect is nausea. Quit smoking. Slow turkey. Talk to your doctor about Chantix. Five sixteen. Hyundai and Uber have announced a partnership to make flying taxis. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Elizabeth Hur have details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Uber and Hyundai teaming up on a new flying taxi. A full-scale mock-up is being unveiled this week at the Consumer Electronics Show. The company say it will carry up to four passengers and will reach 180 miles an hour. They hope to start service in three years. Amazon is trying to make it easier to pump gas by essentially turning your car into a credit card. All you have to do is say, Alexa, pay for gas. The voice command only works if you have an Alexa-enabled car. It's rolling out soon at thousands thousands of Exxon and mobile stations. A new battery could keep your cell phone charged for five days, even while you use it. The lithium sulfur battery has been developed by researchers in Australia. They say it could also power an electric car for 600 miles, but no word yet on when it could hit the market. Hmm, that's a good one. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 517. Let's check on the roadways once again. Any traffic trouble spots to be aware of this morning? No, not yet, but an interesting point. They're saying that that same battery that can power your cell phone for five days can carry an electric car for 600, for 600 miles. miles. How is that possible? So how big is that battery that you got to tote behind you for your cell phone to last for five days? How much power does your phone use compared to a car? Yeah, exactly. So right now, something's wrong with that math. As we take a look at the roadways there, uh, I-10 and Frio inbound, outbound lanes, not too bad. Do have a vehicle with flashing lights there off to the side on that far right-hand shoulder. Other areas like 35 at FM 482, we're seeing a few more vehicles out there on the roadway. Uh, nothing that should delay you at this point. Right now, all travel times are well within the normal travel time range. Then 35 at 604 up on that far northeast side. So far, no problems there. No signs of anybody towing any batteries out there from what we can see on TransGuide. So with dry roads and no accidents out there so far, looks like a pretty good commute. Thank you, Marcus. Oh, you know, there's a lot of sleepy eyes out there this morning as everybody gets up and back to school. Yep. And it's a little bit chilly out there. Yeah, grab a jacket before you, uh, you head out. In some areas, it's still in the 50s down in the southeast, but out in the parts of the hill country, we're down close to freezing right now. Wow. And it's going to cool down a little bit more. We're at 50 right now, although we've cooled down about 3 degrees in the past hour, and we'll drop down uh, probably into the low 40s. Or it's all set How's the warm-up going to come along? Nice mid 60s later on today, so that's just about uh, just about normal. It's been windier overnight, and of course that's been shaking up those mountain cedar trees. The updated count is going to be coming out later on this morning, and then the wind is not going to be a huge issue later on today. Beautiful. Yeah, really nice weather for being winter. This is basically winter around here. We had some high wispy clouds yesterday in those beautiful blue skies. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture and nothing out there. As a matter of fact, that's kind of the best way to, to sum up the, the overall weather pattern this week. Nothing really too extreme, except for Mountain Cedar, which basically is not weather, but um, it is related to the wind. We do have uh, these temperatures that are in the 50s right now, and then, like I said, those 30s out in portions of the hill country, and even 20s way out there, northwest portions of the hill country this morning. 42 in Hondo, 41 Uvalde. Really dry air has started to work its way in here as well, and the dew points and the humidity therefore going to be continuing to drop down. Now the wind is out of the north at about 10-15 miles per hour. It is going to be easing up later on today, and 
for the time being, it will continue to pull down, like I said, that drier air. And so with the really dry air, it's going to elevate the fire danger later on. Now, wind, like I said, is going to be easing up somewhat, but still relative humidities, especially out in portions of the hill country, are going to be extremely low uh, throughout the rest of today. Now, as we go into overnight, nothing really going on. Tomorrow morning, we start off pretty nice, and then throughout the day, humidity really starts to come back into the picture. And by later on tomorrow evening, that's when the clouds start to work their way back into the picture. And then overnight tomorrow night, it does look like we'll have a couple of uh, sprinkly showers, so maybe a damp start to the day on Thursday. Now, as far as satellite picture, we had those few high level clouds hanging around the area. We'll have mostly clear skies throughout the day and then elsewhere around the country. I mean, for the short term, there's really nothing going on. There is a front which will move on through here. And that's going to be later on um, Friday again. So we had the one move through overnight and then in behind that we have nice, nice weather for the next couple of days. Then we get this next trough, which is going to start to develop. That's going to pull in more of the humidity and it's going to start to get the atmosphere a little bit churned up. And so that's why we'll have the chance for a couple of showers on Thursday and then Friday as the front starts to work its way in our direction. Better chance for some showers, even a couple of thunderstorms around here. Then once that front moves on through, by overnight hours on Saturday or excuse me, sun Friday into Saturday. I'll get my days straight. Uh, we are going to set up for another fantastic weekend. Maybe another little bit of a front moves through on Monday to give us another chance for a couple of showers. But again, nothing, nothing really extreme as far as any temperatures or unfortunately any rain. But we do have that chance of rain later on in the week. 62 degrees today at noon, sunny skies. Wind out of the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Northerly wind right now, and then it continues to kind of shift around and become southeasterly by later on today. 65 for a high temperature today, which is actually a little bit above normal, but much cooler than yesterday by almost 10 degrees. Tomorrow we're going to start off pretty chilly. We won't have as much of a breeze, and with all this dry air in place, that'll allow temperatures to drop down. No cloud cover. But then the clouds increase late in the day tomorrow. Another fantastic day. I mean, Yesterday, today, tomorrow look great. Clouds on Thursday, a couple of showers, very warm Thursday and Friday. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms on Friday, and we clear out in another beautiful sort of prize-winning weekend. Well, I'd bring those rain showers to everybody's house, even if it's just a Keep little bit. fingers crossed, yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. 522, 50 degrees. Are you ready for a Knives Out sequel? Yes. Up next? I know you liked it, but you weren't too thrilled. I, I, I was, couldn't wait to leave. <laughs> We need to get a whole thought it was boring. Well, there you go. Up next, more on what could be the mysterious next chapter. But that's just two guys' opinions. Uh, pick three numbers: seven nine six Fireball zero daily four nine four zero eight Fireball eight. And you cash five numbers: four six nine twenty twenty two Texas two step two three fifteen thirty one with a bonus ball of nineteen. Five twenty-five fans of a certain big screen sleuth are in luck. CNN's David Daniel has that and more entertainment news in your Hollywood Minute. I suspect foul play. Daniel Craig's clue-chasing detective Benoit Blanc from Knives Out has his eyes on another case. Writer-director Ryan Johnson tells The Hollywood Reporter he's working on a sequel featuring the southern fried sleuth. The whodunit has uncovered nearly a quarter billion dollars in worldwide ticket sales so far. The year's most anticipated films, according to Fandango's latest survey, have something in common, female directors. Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman 1984 tops the list, followed by Kate Shortland's Black Widow, Chloe Zhao's The Eternals, and Nikki Caro's Mulan. Fandango surveyed more than 2,000 millennial film fans to compile the list. Miley Cyrus reportedly has settled a $300 million lawsuit over her 2013 hit, We Can't Stop. Jamaican songwriter Michael May sued Cyrus and her label RCA Records for copyright infringement, claiming the song closely resembled his 1988 tune, We Run Things. According to Reuters, the parties have reached a settlement. No word how much money will eventually change hands due to the deal. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
Tuesday morning time check, 527, still 50 degrees. Australia continues to fight back against bushfires that have scorched nearly 15 million acres so far. Our local students and staff preparing for a worst case scenario, a school shooting. And who will be the great Jeopardy player of all time? We have a first look at this primetime special. It's Tuesday, January 7th. The Cedar Fever has kind of smacked all of us upside the face. Yeah, you were just saying you just feel out of sorts a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if it was a cold that then led into some of this uh, cedar business, but I think just even if you don't have allergies, usually it you're not you. alone. I have yeah. a little bit of a headache, I think, because of it. Do you get cedar fever allergies? Yes. Uh. Yes. And here's the thing: it stinks. If you don't take antihistamines on a regular basis and you start taking them now, it takes about a week for them to mm -hmm. fully kick in, and then it'll be gone. Well, yeah. actually, probably not <laughs> in a week. How are the roadways no. looking? It'll take longer than a week to, before it's gone. Uh, roadways look pretty good. A uh, lot better than the atmosphere right now, so uh, no incidents out there that will slow you down. Uh, if you could hold your breath from the time you exit your house to the yeah. time you get in your car, you'd be doing great. Became windier around here as of uh, last night. And where are we at this morning, Mike? Well, I, I was just going to comment on what he said about getting in your house if your house is a... Uh, biohazard area that is completely sealed from the outdoors because I'm keep, sure that uh, mountain cedar keep changing those there. filters that <laughs> that's good important. point um, well we had the front move through as you mentioned and it's still kind of breezy out there cold temperatures in the hill country a little bit milder to the southeast and wind has been enough overnight to where I'm sure it's going to be shaking up those trees uh, out of the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour and then later on today wind is going to be easing up and we'll have a high temperature up to 65 with plenty of sunshine out there it's going to be another just gorgeous gorgeous day Good. Very cold again tomorrow. Uh, this is going to be as far as northerly winds the last uh, for at least a couple of days, but you know, we're still just in the throes of the season. Take a look outside right now with a live cam and we've got some clear skies out there. It's going to be a gorgeous sunrise again today and temperatures. Yeah, it depends on where you live. Comfort is now right below freezing Kerrville 35 50 in town. We did drop down from last hour. We were about 53 degrees, so the cooler air is going to continue to kind of push its way down to the south and to the southeast. Randolph's at 48 as of right now. We've got some low 50s to the southeast and even 29 right now in junction. So big difference on where you live, but grab a jacket and then you won't need it by later on today and the wind uh, is a little breezier this morning and it's been we were talking about breezy overnight, but it will be uh, dying down. But you know, it's going to be adding to that number. We're probably going to be my guess would be just a just a hunch, maybe breaking 30,000. Not anything you want to be writing home about, unfortunately, but more mountain cedar today. We do have some rain chances later on in the week. It's looking OK, and then we're setting up for a beautiful weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. You haven't had much to talk about thus far, Marcus. Well, uh, right now, Mike, as far as the traffic's concerned, that's the great news for folks this morning. No incidents out there, nothing that will slow you down. All the travel times well within the normal travel time range. And as you take a look at the map, you can see no incidents out there. Let's take a look at Transguide, a couple of cameras. Highway 9604 looking pretty good despite a little bit of construction on the access road. And then I-10 at the Y here in the downtown vicinity. So far, no issues. Just remember to buckle up and watch that follow nuisance once you head out this morning. Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. A noise in the night has led to a disturbing sight for a man at a northwest side apartment complex. San Antonio police say he found another man dead. Katrina Weber live in the 8800 block of Cinnamon Creek, which is not very far from the medical center. That's where it all happened. So, Katrina, what have you found out about the death? Well, police were able to tell us that that man was the victim of a shooting. They found him toward the back of those apartments across the street, the Hearthstone Apartments. Beyond that, though, it seems that this is a bit of a mystery. Well, the man who called police around 2 this morning told them he had heard noises outside his apartment. He says he looked out into the parking lot and found the victim dead. Once police arrived, they discovered he had been shot. What they don't know is who killed him or why, but they did spend several hours here trying to figure that out. The police were here right until around 5 this morning. They had not uh, or they had roped off a section of the parking lot while they investigated. They were able to tell us, though, that the man who was killed appears to have been in his 30s. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Cibolo police are reminding residents to report crimes to police as soon as possible rather than 
uh, take it to social media. This after they learned through Facebook about an alleged kidnapping incident that happened weeks ago. Officer Matt Shima said they were sent a video of a concerned father who was speaking out against sex trafficking after he said he learned that his young daughter was nearly kidnapped in front of the Walmart on Cibolo Valley Drive. The incident happened back on December 22nd, but an investigation didn't start until three weeks after officer sought, uh, later after an officer sought after the father, I'm sorry, the father is now actively working with police in this ongoing investigation. We haven't seen a kidnapping here in Cibolo, so it's not something that's rampant here. Uh, it's something that we are investigating and we're taking very seriously. She urges anyone to contact police about any incident because social media can harm an investigation. He says it can cause panic and false rumors to circulate and it could warn suspects. He says delaying the report could also make the case difficult as well. If you have any information about this incident, you can send your tips anonymously through the See It, Say It, Send It app. Australian states deal with bushfires every single year. But as CNN's John Lawrence reports, this fire season is different. This one is bringing widespread devastation to the country. Nothing but red as an Australian Defence Force flies above Mallacoota during an evacuation mission. Nearly 15 million acres have been scorched across Australia's six states so far this fire season. This is our war. This fire is Australia's war. Australian insurers estimate more than $480 million in losses so far this fire season. At least 24 deaths have been confirmed, with most of the casualties in New South Wales. The ferocity of this sort of fire is unbelievable. And uh, we made the right decision to evacuate. And for that, I'm thankful. About 2,700 firefighters are battling the infernos. I get a lump in my throat sometimes. It's... Seeing people who come and, yeah, come and uh, have to confront this. The Australian Defence is calling on a few thousand Army Reserve forces and others, including 20 veteran California firefighters. It's just what I love to do. I love fighting fire and I want to hopefully help the Australians out there and hopefully we do our due diligence as we should as a country here and uh, get out there and get to work. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Chevron has evacuated all of its American oil workers from Iraq following last week's U.S. airstrike in Baghdad. Chevron, America's second largest oil company, said it's taking a precautionary measure with the move. All of its employees and contractors who are U.S. citizens have left the Kurdistan region in northern Iraq for the time being at least. A Chevron spokesperson says the safety of its people and facilities is a top priority. ExxonMobil, another major U.S. oil company, has operations in southern Iraq. In a statement, Exxon says it is closely monitoring the situation and does have measures in place to provide security. A dramatic end to a police chase in Florida involving a stolen pickup truck. Take a look at this. After multiple attempts to stop the suspect, troopers performed a pit maneuver, sending the truck rolling off the turnpike right here. Law enforcement surrounded the truck, smashed the windows open, and were eventually able to pull the suspect out of the sunroof after that crash. He's handcuffed and placed under arrest, facing a host of charges, including stealing a vehicle, fleeing, and eluding police. Well, funeral services will be held today for fallen San Antonio ISD officer Cliff Martinez. He was hit by two suspects in a car and killed while working off-duty as a security guard last month at an IHOP on the southeast side. Services are set for 1015 this morning at Community Bible Church, which is at 2477 North Loop 1604. The service will include the retirement of his badge number, a 21-gun salute, and an eagle flyover. New numbers when it comes to homicides in San Antonio and Bear County. When it comes to SAPD, there were 107 cases reported in 2018. Just last year, those cases dropped by two for a total of 105 in 2019. Looking at the numbers for Bear County Sheriff's Office, there were 13 homicide cases the agency worked on. By the end of last year, that number jumped up by two for a total of 15 homicide cases in 2019. San Antonio Bike Share trying to figure out how to fill a $400,000 hole in its budget after a sponsor pulled out one year early. The nonprofit, which is operated under the name B-Cycle and most recently Swell Cycle, learned last year that it would be losing its title sponsor, Southwest General Hospital, in 2020. SA Bike Share's executive director says she does not know why the hospital's parent company, Stewart Healthcare, decided to pull out of the three-year deal. 
The nonprofit wants to increase ridership and sponsorships. And while it doesn't currently get any money for operations from the city of San Antonio, it is exploring the possibility. Just about 540, 50 degrees. Go ahead. Who will the ultimate Jeopardy champion be? We have a preview of the primetime special event coming up. And next, how local school districts are preparing in case there is another school shooting. And live cam once again giving us a look outside. Everybody's back at school as of today. It's going to be a little bit busier on the roadways. Keep that in mind. Five forty two with a nation under fire, students and staff preparing for a worst case scenario, a school shooting. A few minutes could be the difference between life and death. It's one of the reasons why children as young as 12 will be taught how to stop excessive bleeding and keep people alive. At the beginning of this year, a new Texas law went into effect requiring two things from independent school districts and charter schools. Place bleeding control kits in the schools and train certain staff on how to stop the bleed. Just west of San Antonio, Medina Valley ISD plans to offer training to 7th graders and above in the spring. Staff at Medina Valley ISD were taught yesterday how to pack a wound, hold direct pressure, and how to use a tourniquet. It's good to know how to pack wounds like that, um, especially I, having kids on the bus. Uh, you know, anything could happen at any time. There you go. There you go. The training for school staff was hosted by the University Health System. Employees at several other districts, including Fort Sam, Medina, Southwest, Southside, and Northside ISD have been trained. The training for students in grades 7 and above is not mandatory, but districts are required to offer it. And Case that offered it to all the employees here. Uh, last year. It was very eye-opening, and if you're squeamish, it, it's, it, it's a good thing to do ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then you know what to do, especially the tourniquets. It's not what you think. You tie it in a different part than you thought you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. Right now it's 544, 50 degrees. Up next, a preview of Jeopardy, greatest of all time special event. We're going to hear from the contestants. Well, that was perfect timing. We just ran the commercial, a new competition show coming to ABC Tuesday. That would be today. Jeopardy, the greatest of all time, pinning the top three earning contestants in a best of seven tournament. Alex Trebek is hosting the special series. ABC's Romina Puja has more of this exciting week-long program. Jeopardy, the greatest of all time. But this is, this is big. This week kicks off a competition like none other. If you're our kind of people, just to be able to pit yourself against, you know, the smartest people they could find, the hardest clues, the fastest paced game, it's a, it's a real rush. Ken Jennings, Brad Rutter, and James Holzhauer will face off for an ABC special series, Jeopardy! The Greatest of All Time. The three highest earning Jeopardy! contestants competing for a million dollar prize. A handsome payday for what could be only three days work, but we hope it'll go longer. Fans are happy to see Alex Trebek, who is suffering from cancer, hosting the special show. Jeopardy for the past 36 years has meant my professional life, and it has become almost as important to me as my family. I think just that he's continuing to show up to work every day. He's setting a great example. He's the epitome of the old school broadcaster. Nothing gets in the way of the job. The players have won a combined $10.7 million during their runs on the show. Household name Ken Jennings setting Jeopardy records. Brad Rutter winning the most money in game show history. And Holzhauer bringing the speed with the buzzer. James, of course, hit the world like a cyclone a year and a half ago when he won money faster than any other contestant in history. What is Sarah Lawrence? You the youngest right. of the three excited America when he came close to catching Jennings' Record records. Settings. You're the same age as Jeopardy. Yeah, it's wow. crazy, right? I know. <laughs> These three wise men are adding to their already substantial earnings, but the winner will have special bragging rights as the greatest contestant of all time. The series begins Tuesday, January 7th. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. God bless him, Alex Trebek, fighting the fight. He is fighting, and you can tell he is not 100% as he's fighting pancreatic cancer, I believe. But boy, he is not giving up, and he is a tough one. Right now it's 549. What do you say we check traffic? I think that's a great idea. Marcus, how's it looking? 
Well, right now as we take a look at the roadways, still looking pretty good. No obstructions out there. No delays in anyone's travel times. Look at all the green. Uh, that means no slowdowns out there. So just watch that speed once you head out. Don't forget to buckle up and make sure you watch out for those kids a little bit later and all those school zones and also in the neighborhoods. As we transition over to Transguide, take a look here in the downtown vicinity. 35, 37, the interchange is there. No problems there. 35 at FM 1103. Start to get a few more vehicles out there as speeds start to pick up. All the way through 35 at FM 482. You know, we were just talking to, uh, what do you say, about 30 years that, that Jeopardy's been on? But there was the original version of Jeopardy way back when we Art were Fleming? Art Fleming. Wow. And they had actual, uh, on the board up there, the cards that, it was yeah. physical cards that they would, mm -hmm. you know, pull out to reveal the questions. Uh, aired on NBC from 64 through 75. I remember. When they first started Wheel of Fortune 2, and they would have to actually turn them instead of just touch them. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, oh, what's his name? Was the uh, host before? Pat Sajak? Yeah, before Pat Sajak. Oh, I'll look, look that up, up while okay. you're doing that. Um, I can picture him. All right, uh, outside right now, uh, this is a picture from a couple of days ago, and interesting, Chuck Woolery. Chuck Woolery. That was his name, yes. Finally discovered who's making the holes in his fence post there. Have uh -oh. a little woodpecker sitting there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Mystery solved. And uh, beautiful, beautiful flying weather today as this uh, plane is coming in there. Landing from southeast up to the uh, northwest. We do have a bit of a, a northwesterly, northerly to northwesterly wind right now in behind that front that moved on through here. Depends on where you live. We got 50 in town, 52 Floresville, and then 34 in uh, Kerrville. Fredericksburg right now is below freezing and then further out to the north and west. And with that front moving on through, not only dry air is being pulled on in here, we've got the wind out of the north. And so that's going to continue to pull the cooler air down in here. So I think we'll be dropping down at least another uh, anywhere from, say, 5 to 10 degrees in the next couple of hours. The wind has been breezier overnight and it will continue to sort of ease up throughout the day. But obviously it's done its due as far as the mountain cedar is concerned. Yesterday's reading more than 28,000 is probably going to be going up. When today's reading comes out in uh, about an hour, hour and a half or so. As far as the wind, like I said, it's out of the north right now, pulling in the drier air, and that's obviously raising the, uh, the fire danger, especially out in portions of the hill country. We do have a beautiful day in store today. Wind's going to be shifting around to the southeast. We won't really feel the effects of that until probably later in the day tomorrow. We start off very cold tomorrow morning, as a matter of fact, because we won't have as breezy of conditions. The cooler air kind of settles on in here and clear skies, and so therefore down around mid-30s here in town. A lot of freezing temperatures tomorrow morning. Then throughout the day, here comes the humidity moving back on in here. That's going to help with the cloud cover. Clouds going to be increasing throughout the afternoon tomorrow. Like I said, we start off with clearer skies, and then we get those clouds to move on in here that's going to hold temperatures up tomorrow night into Thursday and we'll be starting off probably with a couple of uh, little sprinkly sprinkly showers around the area on Thursday and a few showers scattered about here and there throughout the day Thursday as far as any big systems coming in our direction there's still nothing showing up on the map as of right now we do have another front which will move through here uh, by Friday and so we get the moisture moving on back in here and then with the approach of the front the atmosphere is going to get kind of stirred up on Friday and so that's going to give us a better chance for rain on Friday especially in the afternoon and evening hours maybe even a couple of thunderstorms as well today sunny skies another just sort of prize winning day 62 at noon so we'll be right around the normal high at noon and then just get up to uh, 65 degrees so about 10 below where we were yesterday it was warm yesterday afternoon sunny skies really really nice the wind is not going to be as big of an issue later on this afternoon. Tomorrow morning, very cold start down to 34 degrees and then we get up to 65. A lot of sunshine starting off. Clouds increase later on in the day tomorrow and cloudy skies overnight. A couple of showers on Thursday, even uh, like I said, sort of a damp start it looks like on Thursday morning. Very warm in the afternoon up to the mid 70s. Same thing on Friday and we'll have that better chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms and then the next front's going to move through here and Boy, how many weekends, almost in a row, last weekend, this weekend, we've had just perfect weather, and that's going to be the situation this weekend. We've been super fortunate. Shh, mm -hmm. don't jinx it. Okay, why are you whispering? Who's going to hear? 554, 50 degrees.
A NASA astron astronaut rather, takes a pick of 2020's first meteor shower from the International Space Station. We're going to tell you more about it coming up next. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, seven, nine, six, fireball zero, daily four, nine, four, zero, eight, fireball eight. And your cash five, four, six, nine, 2022. Texas two step, two, three, 15, 31, with a bonus ball of 19. Well, an astronaut aboard the International Space Station recently had a front row view of shooting stars lighting up the sky over the northern hemisphere. NASA astronaut Christina Koch posted a dazzling image of the first meteor shower of 2020. In her tweet, she said the shooting stars could be seen from space. A composite image shows the bright lights of several meteors blazing into the atmosphere. You can also see the green bands of the Aurora Borealis, or better known as the Northern Lights. A little, than, a little less than three minutes till six. Pick up any mobile phone, you'll probably find dozens of them. We're talking about apps. Still to come, a look at some of the trends you can expect this year with those applications. Trans Guide, we're looking around town. 37 at Jones Avenue. Marcus will have an update on Time Saver Traffic. Stick around. Thousands more American troops heading to the Middle East amid tensions with Iran. I may be seeing Serena Marshall with what the Pentagon is now saying about plans to withdraw from Iraq coming up. Outside with live cam, the front has moved through breezy conditions. You know what that means. More mountain cedar on top of already high counts. Live from Case at 12. <coughs> Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. See, Mike's already coughing. Good morning, everybody. It's <laughs> Tuesday. It is January 7th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Yeah, you're definitely going to feel it if you do have allergies. But perhaps rain may come our way later this week and wash some of it out. We can hope. Uh, it's hard to escape the hacking and the congestion right now. Yeah, it started off as a cold, but I think, uh, you know, it's... You just blame it on the mountain cedar. Blame everything on the mountain cedar because it is high and it's going to uh, probably be even higher. Here's a live look at uh, live cam airplane coming in. He's landing up to the northwest and that's because we had that front move in. So we've got wind coming in here primarily out of the north to northwest. OK, we were at 50 last hour. Now we're down to 44 degrees here in town. So the cooler air is continuing to work its way down here. 33 in Kerrville. Definitely grab a jacket before you head out the door. 46 Randolph still 50. 52 in Floresville, but you'll be getting some of this cooler air as well. And really cold air way out there in northwest portions of the Hill Country. 27 Junction, 21 right now in Ozona. We're not going to be getting that cold, but it is uh, chilly enough. And then we've got this wind out of the north, primarily uh, about, uh, say, 10, maybe 15 miles per hour. It was windier overnight. It is going to, we're going to see the wind subside just a little bit throughout the day. They're not going to be as breezy, but of course, winds have probably already done their damage as far as the mountain cedar is concerned. This was yesterday's reading, 28,000 plus, and the updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so and have a a fear that it's going to be much, much higher than that. Unfortunately, throughout the rest of the morning, we're going to see temperatures again dropping down a few more degrees around here and then nice warm up throughout the day. Plenty of sunshine all day long. We are going to be making up into the low 60s by noon, which is about the normal high temperature we will be slightly above normal later on today. Although nowhere near as warm as yesterday, about 10 degrees below yesterday's reading, which was up in the mid 70s. So this is closer to uh, what we could expect. Very cold morning tomorrow morning, and then we get some milder temperatures moving on in here. And as Leslie mentioned, that chance for some rain later on in the week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo and I said last half hour you haven't had much to talk about and doesn't look like there's much out there right now. No, but I do have a suggestion for your graphics. Uh, sure. When you're uh, looking at the pollen, you have moderate, high, very high. You need to add one now, out of control. I like that. <laughs> Just out of control. Like right that. now, though, uh, the total opposite of that is uh, what we have on the roadways right now. No incidents. Everything working very, very well out there on the roadways with no incidents and no delays. As we take a look at Transguide I-10 at Medical, you can see inbound and outbound lanes of I-10 uh, looking pretty good. Five lanes in each direction right now. Pretty much have the road to yourself. Just watch that speed once you hit out. Mark? Through this morning, uh, the morning's off to a mysterious start for homicide detectives and people who live in a northwest side apartment complex. They're all tra trying to figure out why a man there was shot to death. Katrina Weber live in the 8800 block of Cinnamon Creek, not far from the medical center. Katrina, we understand that one of the residents made that discovery overnight. 
Well, that's right. That man here at the Hearthstone Apartments called police around 2 o'clock this morning after finding the victim dead in the parking lot. And for nearly three hours after that, the area became a crime scene. The police roped off that section of the parking lot while they worked, trying to find out more about this death. The man who called them here told them he had heard noises outside his apartment. He looked outside and saw the victim dead in the parking lot. Police determined he had been shot. They still don't know who shot him or why. Well, they did not release his name right away, but they told us that he appeared to be in his 30s. Reporting live from the Northwest Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, a man is facing charges after police say he crashed his motorcycle on the west side. This happened on Highway 151 near Petrenko Road just after 11 last night. The police arrived at the scene. They found the 30-year-old man trying to walk the motorcycle off the road following the crash. Police say the man was detained for possible DWI. No other injuries were reported. Breaking overnight, a stampede at a funeral procession for a top Iranian general killed in a U.S. airstrike late last week. 35 people were killed. At least 190 others were hurt. That stampede happened in the hometown of General Qasem Soleimani as the procession got underway. This as thousands of U.S. troops are being deployed to the Middle East following his death. And the Pentagon now saying there are no plans to withdraw American forces from Iraq. ABC's Serena Marshall has details. American soldiers leaving home, landing in the Middle East. 3,500 troops from the 82nd Airborne, six B-52 bombers deployed to the region, bracing for retaliation after the U.S. drone strike that killed Iran's top military commander, General Qassem Soleimani. Millions of mourners turning out for his funeral. ABC's Martha Raditz in Tehran. There was weeping on the street, but that was mixed with anger and a real call for revenge. President Trump continues to defend the killing of Soleimani, telling Rush Limbaugh. And we had a shot at it and we took him out. And we're a lot safer now because of it. Now we'll see what happens. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff also defending the decision to kill the Iranian general, calling the evidence compelling. Did it exactly say who, what, when, where? No. But he was planning, coordinating, and synchronizing significant combat operations against U.S. military forces in the region, and it was imminent. General Mark Milley also saying there are no plans to withdraw American troops from Iraq after a draft letter was accidentally circulated. The indicated troops were moving out. Milley saying it was never meant to be made public, adding nobody's leaving. But comes as Iraq's parliament took a non-binding vote to kick U.S. troops out of the country, angry the killing of Soleimani occurred on their soil. The U.S. government and NATO have also now announced a pause to fighting ISIS, so American troops can protect their own at U.S. military bases in Iraq. But that means only the Iraqi army is there to fight ISIS if the caliphate chooses to go on the offensive. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. And topping your morning headlines in Puerto Rico, a 6.4 magnitude earthquake struck overnight. It's the largest in a series of quakes that have struck U.S. territory. Puerto Rico's power authority says one of the country's main power plants was damaged. But power is expected to be restored later today. The quake triggered a string of aftershocks and there was a lot of damage. A tsunami alert was initially issued, but it has since been canceled. Now to Australia, where a funeral was held today near Sydney to honor a volunteer firefighter who died battling one of Australia's blazes. Andrew Dwyer and his colleague were killed after the truck rolled off the road in the line of duty. Right now, exhausted firefighters are racing to shore up defenses before scorching temperatures return in a matter of days. Cooler weather has provided some relief as they work on containment lines and evacuations. So far, damage is estimated at at least $485 million. Well, back here at home, the president and CEO of San Antonio Zoo is calling on a Spurs star to join in their efforts to send help to the animals impacted by the fires in Australia. Tomorrow, send a tweet to Patty Mills. It says, Patty Mills, the San Antonio Zoo, is researching sending staff to Australia to help with animal care. Let's chat. Zoo officials say they haven't heard from Mills yet, but the plan to send help is in the works. Researchers are worried about the animals that have small geographical ranges. With more than 200 fires burning and more land expected to be consumed, total habitats could be destroyed. Researchers in Australia say nearly half a billion animals have already been killed. We have more information about this story on ksat.com. 
That video's heartbreaking. And have you seen, there's there are like just people riding their bikes and stuff who just get their water bottles and are mm -hmm. giving them to the koalas and trying and to help the animals. Oh, it just breaks your heart. 608, 44 degrees. Still to come, Wheel of Fortune host Pat Sajak and his daughter speaking out about his health. Coming up in your GMA First Look. And the tech world kicked off the big show on the Vegas Strip. After the break, a preview of what's hot at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show. It was a really big show, really big show. What was that from? That is uh, Ed Sullivan. Very good, Mr. Back Austin. When Mike was already probably in his 20s. Yeah, probably. Welcome back. It's 12 minutes after 6. It's one of the biggest tech events on the planet, and it kicks off on the Las Vegas Strip today. The Consumer Electronics Show ringing in the new decade with new gadgets and some pretty wild ideas that have turned into reality. CNN's Karen Kaifa has been on the ground in Las Vegas getting a sneak peek of the most practical, the most innovative, and the most outlandish items at this year's show. Tech lovers making the annual trek to Las Vegas to see what's next. <laughs> CES officially kicks off Tuesday, but companies have been eagerly giving previews to early birds. CES always a showcase for the next big thing in TVs. Samsung showing off this model that rotates from landscape to vertical for a big screen that mirrors a user's smartphone, a nod to the way millennials consume video content. Some companies aiming for the littlest tech adopters. The sensor somewhere and the, the diaper. Lumi by Pampers is a smart diaper. The activity sensor is automatically tracking baby's sleep 24 7, as well as their diaper uh, status, so the wetness level and diaper changes. Other tech designed to ease challenges for seniors and their caregivers. Among ITRI's robots is Picola, a companion that detects when things might be a little off and can call for help. Eskin smart pajamas have sensors to keep tabs on the wearer's comfort level and detect falls. Some tech here just for fun, like the Lovot, who, well, just loves its owner. How do I wake him up? Yeah, wake up. <laughs> and Bartesian shaking up at home cocktail mixing. It's about a 20 second process all in all, and it self cleans at the end, so there's no cross contamination for the next cocktail. Big and small, all ready to take their share of a consumer electronics market. The Consumer Technology Association expects to reach $422 billion in the year ahead. In Las Vegas, I'm Karen Kafa. If you dreamed of driving the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile, that could be a reality. Oscar Mayer searching for its next set of Wienermobile drivers to hold a one-year position with the company starting in June. Hot doggers are what are the drivers of the Wienermobiles are called. They'll travel coast to coast representing the company in interviews, charity events, and more. If you think you fit the bun, you can apply by January 31st. We have all the details on our homepage. Oh, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener. You were doing good humming it over there, Mr. Oster. Whistling. Whistling. Whatever. That's what I truly want That's to be. Yeah, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener. wiener. Oh, thank you for getting on the free shop. <laughs> <laughs> now he's like, darn it, I have to I sit know. up. Here's Marcus <laughs> with Time Saver Traffic. Everybody would be in love with me. Is that how it goes at the end? Everyone would be in love with me. I'm just going to let them sing for right now. <laughs> <laughs> you have no other choice. <laughs> right now, folks, uh, things look, still look great out there on the roadways. No delays, all the highway travel times well within the normal travel time range. As we take a look at TransGuide, I-10 and medical traffic still uh, looking pretty good. So no increases that we see just yet in those eastbound and westbound lanes. 410 and Austin Highway, however, we are seeing increases on those westbound main lanes of 410 headed backward towards 281. And then 410 at Fredericksburg Road, you can see their traffic uh, starting to get a move on. There's I-10 410 at the I-10 410 interchange up there on the northwest side, you can see. Traffic moving along fairly well. So once you head out, just uh, remember those kids and the school zones, and they're not paying attention. So make sure you pay attention in the neighborhoods, particularly as you're coming up to those cars parked on the curbs. They tend to just start out in front of you. And we're going to blink, and the school year is going to be over. Okay, yep. don't go there I yet. I just blinked, and it's not over. It's not. It's Blink it's twice. Gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Well, well, I can genie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can you make the pollen go away? <laughs> uh, think about, I mean, last year at this time, we were saying the exact same thing and how quickly that went by. I want it to slow down a little bit. Okay, let's just slow down. Good luck with that.
Take a look outside at this picture and if you can just slow down and just savor this shot. I love that and the caption is even better. Who knew Mother Nature was into impressionist style painting? That's beautiful. It that, almost looks like an angel's wings or something. Or, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. I like that. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. We are going to have a spectacular sunrise again today. Yesterday was picture perfect and today will be as well. We're down to 44 degrees right now. So in the past uh, about uh, two, three hours, we've lost nearly 10 degrees as that front moved on through. The wind shifted around initially and then the cooler air has been getting pushed on in here. We're down below freezing again in Comfort, 33 in Kerrville. So you know you got a lot of freezing temperatures up here in portions of the hill country. 46 Randolph, 45 Canyon Lake and we had some 50s down here to the southeast, but again, the cooler air continues to push its way down to the uh, southeast. 27 right now in Junction, and really, really dry air is in place, and it's going to stay very dry throughout the day, and that's going to elevate the fire danger. Even though we don't have much of a breeze out there right now, and wind is going to be about, say, 5 to 10 miles per hour, but with the extremely low humidities, like I said, that's going to elevate that fire danger. And with a bit of a breeze out there, too, you know that 44 degrees feels even colder than that. So grab a jacket this morning and you probably won't need it by this afternoon. It's going to be one of those just sort of open up the window. Well, not with the Mount Cedar, unfortunately. Um, well, if you don't really suffer from it, I guess you can open up the windows. But anyway, we are going to have uh, some gorgeous weather today and very dry air is going to stay in place throughout the rest of today as well as tomorrow. And that's going to allow for temperatures to get even colder tomorrow. So we'll be about 10 degrees colder than what we are right now by tomorrow morning. And then the southeasterly winds really take over and the humidity is going to come back in here fairly quickly throughout the afternoon tomorrow. And that's going to increase the clouds. Nothing out there today. As a matter of fact, I don't even think we'll have any of those high clouds like we had around here yesterday, but by tomorrow evening and right around dinner time or late afternoon dinner time and then into the nighttime hours, the clouds thicken up and this computer model, which uh, don't disagree with at all, has some uh, sprinkly showers around the area by Thursday morning. So we may have a bit of a damp commute on Thursday and a few scattered showers around the area during the day on Thursday and then a better chance of rain on Friday. Around the country, there's nothing really too extreme as far as temperatures. I mean, you've got 12 degrees at uh, International Falls and Caribou, which are usually really, really cold spots. But moving up further to the north into Canada, we've still got some just ridiculously cold numbers there, almost 30 degrees below zero. And it, there are still some indications that some of this cold air wants to kind of push its way down to the south by maybe the latter part of next week. Until then, there's the first front that moved through this little bit of a uh, trough right there. Great weather in behind it. Then things shift around fairly quickly by, like I said, tomorrow night into Thursday and Friday. We get this southwesterly flow, a lot more moisture around here, and the atmosphere gets sort of churned up a little bit more. And as that front approaches, that's going to touch off showers, even a couple of thunderstorms on Friday going into Friday night. Front comes in here clears us out for the weekend. The weekend looks spectacular. Nice, cool mornings, pleasant afternoons. Uh, another little bit of a front is going to hopefully touch off a couple of more showers by Monday. And then in behind that, again, there are some indications that that cold air is wanting to push down in here by the latter part of next week. Well, still kind of a wait and see situation today. Beautiful out there except for the mountain cedar. By the way, the updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. 62 degrees today at noon. That's roughly the normal high temperature. We'll be a little bit above normal later on today, but 10 degrees below yesterday's high temperature. Very warm yesterday up to the mid 70s. Sunny skies out there. Cold tomorrow morning down to 34 in town. So good hard freeze in portions of the hill country. We got to get up into the mid 60s again tomorrow. Increasing clouds late in the day. A couple of showers here and there on Thursday. A little bit better chance for some rain later in the day. Friday, even a thunderstorm or two. Mid 70s both those days. Look at those low temperatures. Very, very mild. The low Friday morning is going to be almost where our high is today. And then the weekend, just spectacular. Spectacular is fine with me. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We will celebrate. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 621, 44 degrees. Just to have new details about the future of flying taxis. What we're now learning in your morning consumer news. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K.
could all use an extra $100. That's a reason to switch to Jackson Hewitt, conveniently located in Walmart. Now enjoy a bonus gift card up to $100 when you file taxes with Jackson Hewitt and get part of your refund on a Walmart gift card. Get your bonus at Jackson Hewitt at Walmart. Mucinex, cold and flu, all in one. Fights. Oh, no, 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 no. Sore throat, fever, cough, sinus pressure, chest congestion, sinus congestion, measles and body pain, all in one. Did you really need the caps lock? Mucinex, cold and flu, all in one. We are with our guest, Clarence. Please tell us what's going on. I'm terrified of running out of international delight. That's the fear of running out. Faux row. But we're going to fix that for you right now. It's so big. 64 ounces. Faux row no more. <laughs> I am totally blind. And non-24 can make me show up too early or too late or make me feel like I'm not really there. Talk to your doctor and call 844-234-2424. Maggie Sajak. In this morning's GMA First Look, a big surprise on last night's Wheel of Fortune. We knew Vanna White would be filling in for Pat Sajak as he recovered from his recent medical emergency. But now we have finally solved the puzzle of who would fill in for Vanna. And it was none other than Pat Sajak's daughter, Maggie. You probably thought about life without your dad. That's how serious things were. It definitely does hit you in those moments. You appreciate the person even more. GMA sat down with Sajak, now on the mend, and his daughter to talk about her big debut and that scary moment that sent him to the hospital. Your dad told me that he's thinking about hanging him up, hanging up the cleats in maybe two to three years. What do you think about that? They'll reveal all in our exclusive interview coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Paula Ferris, ABC News, Orlando. Now to Consumer News, Uber and Hyundai teaming up on a new flying taxi. Check it out. A full-scale mock-up is being unveiled this week at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. The company says it will carry up to four passengers and will reach speeds of 180 miles an hour. They hope to start full service in about three years. Amazon is trying to make it easier to pump gas by essentially turning your car into a credit card. All you have to do is say, Alexa, pay for gas. The voice command only works, though, if you have an Alexa-enabled car. It will be rolling out soon at thousands of Exxon and mobile stations. A new battery could keep your cell phone charged for five days, even while you're using it. The lithium sulfur battery has been developed by researchers in Australia. They say it could also power an electric car for 600 miles. There's no word yet on when it could hit the market or how much it will cost. Your time now is 626 and it's 44 degrees outside. This morning we're talking about a big win for the San Antonio Spurs. Ahead in the next half hour, highlights from their win against the top-ranked Milwaukee Bucks. Noises in the night lead to a morning of investigation, a possible murder. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you all about it. Trans guide right now, we're looking at 10 at the Y. The most noticeable thing from some of the cameras right now is the shake due yes. to that front and the wind that is moving through the area right now. And shaking those trees. It is. As we take a look outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to rise, Mike Osterhage is standing by with the forecast. It is Tuesday, January 7th. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us. All the kiddos should be back in school today. today. Is it affecting traffic? So far, no issues. So we're not seeing any delays in anyone's travel times. All the travel times are well within the normal travel time range right now. And the great news is no accidents. Now, over on the far, far west side, Highway 90, 1604, uh, eastbound Highway 90 access road there between 1604 and 410. We still have that construction on the access road. It's been ongoing for, you know, quite a few weeks, uh, causing just very slight delays. But everybody else moving at great speeds this morning. Okay, Marcus, and there's no way to predict what the pollen count's going to be like today, but we anticipate another brutal day when it comes to mountain cedar. Well, look at it this way. Uh, over the weekend, mountain cedar counts had really gone up. Yesterday, prior to the front, it continued to go up. Uh oh, we that's prior to the front. That was prior to the front. Then we had the front move through overnight, and that's, you know, been shaking up the trees. The updated count's going to be coming out in about a half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Temperatures, we have uh, continued to drop down. In the past couple of hours, we've lost about 10 degrees here in town. Wind is out of the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. It is starting to settle down, and it's going to be a little easier, or a little lighter, I should say, later on today. We're making up to 65 then. Beautiful day. We're going to have plenty of sunshine out there. 
except for all the mountain cedar in the air. And then we're setting up for an even colder morning tomorrow. This is what it looks like on live cam right now. And we're starting to see the uh, early little glow, perhaps, of the sunrise out there. It looks like it's trying to lighten up somewhat. Uh, 44 in town, same thing, Bolverde, 37 at Bernie, and uh, right now 33 degrees up the road in Kerrville. And then you factor in the wind, which, like I said, is not as strong as what it was overnight, but feels like 40 here in town. 27 is the wind chill right now in Kerrville, and it feels like 39 in New Braunfels. Wind out of the north at 8 miles per hour. Uh, nothing overly windy as of right now, except down there around Corpus Christi, but that will be dying down as well. And once again, Read it and weep or read it and sneeze, I should say. It's 28,160 is the mountain cedar count. That was from yesterday morning. The updated count, we may not want to see it. It's going to be coming out a little bit later on. We do have some rain chances down the road as well as another fantastic weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And you said the only problem in the... Uh, Orange on the map over there, 90 at 16.04. Just 90 at 16.04. Really, that's the only delay that we're seeing right now. Other areas are what we expect to see for this time of the morning. Eastbound 16.04 there between Bandera and I-10, and that's par for the course for this time of the morning. But as we take a look at TransGuide, uh, different parts of the city, 16.04. So far, no issues as folks line up to enter that Highway 151 eastbound ramp. And then I-10 and Frio, eastbound and westbound lanes, still looking great right now. The interchange I-10, 16.04, we see no problems, but folks, everyone is back to school, back to work, so watch out for those kids in the neighborhoods. Leslie? Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, noises outside a man's northwest side apartment signaled bad news. Police say that's where they found the body of another man. Katrina Weber is live where it happened in this 8800 block of Cinnamon Creek, which isn't very far from the medical center. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that he was shot. Do police have any suspects? Well, if they do, they have not shared that with us. Early on, though, it seemed that what happened at these Hearthstone apartments was a bit of a mystery even to them. Police answered the call around 2 o'clock this morning and found the victim in the parking lot toward the back of the apartment complex. A man who lives here told them that's just where he found that man. He says he heard noises outside his apartment, then looked outside and saw the victim. Police told us that the man who was killed was in his 30s. Now, they did not release his name to us at that time. And again, police are still trying to figure out who may have shot him and why. Reporting live from the Northwest Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Funeral services will be held today for fallen San Antonio Independent School District Police Officer Cliff Martinez. He was hit by two suspects in a car and killed while working off duty as a security guard last month at an IHOP on the southeast side. Services are set for 1015 this morning at Community Bible Church. That's at 2477 North Loop 1604 East. The service will include the retirement of his badge, a 21-gun salute, and an Eagle helicopter flyover. We have more information on KSAT.com. Look for the story on our homepage. And breaking news overnight in Iran, at least 35 people are dead, 190 others hurt during a stampede. It happened at a funeral procession for a general killed in a U.S. airstrike. The service was held in the hometown of General Qasem Soleimani as the procession got underway. The service drew over one million people in the Iranian capital. Meanwhile, the U.S. is warning ships across the Mideast waterways about the possibility of Iranian action against the United States. You can look for the latest on this story coming up on Good Morning America, beginning at 7. Now the latest out of Australia, a nation that deals with bush fires every year. But as seen as John Lawrence reports, this fire season is different. This one is bringing widespread devastation to the country. Nothing but red as an Australian Defence Force flies above Malakuta during an evacuation mission. Nearly 15 million acres have been scorched across Australia's six states so far this fire season. This is our war. This fire is Australia's war. Australian insurers estimate more than $480 million in losses so far this fire season. At least 24 deaths have been confirmed, with most of the casualties in New South Wales. The ferocity of this sort of fire is unbelievable. And uh, we made the right decision to evacuate. Uh, for that, I'm thankful. About 2,700 firefighters are battling the infernos. I get a lump in my throat sometimes. It's... Seeing people who come and, yeah, come and uh, have to confront this. 
The Australian defense is calling on a few thousand Army Reserve forces and others, including 20 veteran California firefighters. It's just what I love to do. I love fighting fire, and I want to hopefully help the Australians out there, and hopefully we do our due diligence as we should as a country here and uh, get out there and get to work. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, Spurs fans have a lot to celebrate this morning. The Silver and Black beat the top-ranked Milwaukee Bucks at the AT&T Center. Final score 126-104. David Sears was there and has a wrap-up. The Bucks average 120 points a game. The Spurs held him to 104. Giannis averages 30 points a game. The Spurs held him to 24. Everybody in this locker room agrees this is pretty much their most complete game, especially when you consider the competition of the year. Great team win uh, overall. Uh, I think... You know, everybody that got to uh, get in the game today, you know, came out and, and fought hard and, you know, executed the game plan uh, on the offense and defense. End. We were able to do some good things in the first half and, and weren't able to um, maintain that throughout a, a second half. So for us to turn around two days later and, and, and put 48 minutes together um, like we did and, and hold a, a team like that to 104 points, it's, it's definitely signs of us growing. It's big, confidence building, letting us know, you know, we could compete with the best teams um, in this league. You know, we just got to carry it over, you know, um, and accept the challenge every time we play against a, you know, a, a great team like we did tonight. Matter of fact, just anybody, not even a great team. A huge win, especially when you consider they're off on a four-game road trip that starts in Boston on Wednesday with the Spurs. David Sears for Good Morning San Antonio. David Sears is smiling. Yeah, we're all smiling this we morning. We sure are. 638, 44 degrees. After the break, we're talking about apps and the trends we'll be seeing in 2020. Six forty-two. The number of mobile app downloads expected to reach three hundred fifty-two point nine billion in the next couple of years. GMSA producer Jared Hoeing reports on the top app trends coming this year. Pick up any mobile phone and you'll probably find dozens of them. We're talking about apps. There are millions to download, so how will they change this year? The first app trends experts say to watch for is augmented and virtual reality apps. These technologies can help industries provide better experiences to customers. For example, want to buy clothing but don't know how it will look? Now you can try on clothes virtually. Also, healthcare apps are expected to grow in 2020. Intelligent sensors and smart medical equipment can connect to apps and help both doctors and patients monitor certain medical conditions. And watch out for more on-demand apps. They fill your location-based demands and come in many forms, like grocery delivery apps, taxi apps, and food delivery services. Mobile wallet apps are also likely to be used by more businesses. Look for an increase in audio-based wallets that let you easily make payments without cash or a credit card. Finally, a technology called machine learning is set to invade your apps. It can enhance the way you shop by analyzing your buying behavior from previous data. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Jared Hoeing. All right now, 643, forecast is coming up. All right, now we need to check on the roadways. This is about the time it starts getting pretty busy. And we're getting reports of an accident, so uh, let's go straight to this map here. We're going to be traveling north on 281. Now, early reports are that this accident was northbound. We're seeing much heavier slowdowns southbound 281 up here at Marshall Road. So that's going to be just past a uh, Wilderness Oak. As you see, very heavy track backing up all the way to Bulverde. So southbound and northbound main lanes of 281 are being affected right there between Marshall Road and Wilderness Oak. So keep that in mind. And now take a look at the uh, trans guide. Let's move over here. You can see that uh, we are seeing heavier traffic 410 at Austin Highway, but very, very heavy traffic over on that far west side. We're moving over to Highway 90 at Media Creek. As you see, we still have that construction on the access road, but the main lanes nonetheless still very, very heavy as those two lanes head inbound eastbound towards the uh, 410 area. There you see right under the uh, banner there where the where one lane branches off to the connector ramps, the flyover ramps for 410. 281 and Hildebrand also starting to pick up in volume just a little bit. Just watch your speed, particularly around those turns and curves and focus as a reminder in case you missed it earlier. Watch out for those kids going back to school. We've had a couple of weeks without those extra pedestrians out there in the neighborhoods. Have a great spring, everyone. Mm -hmm. Semester, that is. You know, uh, back to the story about all the apps and everything like that. Somebody was telling me that they were um, walking around through a department store or something and she picked up a pair of shoes and looked at them. And within seconds, I think, on her, what, Facebook or something, mm -hmm. 
there were all the ads for blue shoes. And uh, she didn't say a stuff. word, did she? She thought it. But <laughs> that's well, a scary thing. But the thing is, it's like, how did it know? And I guess there's sensors on certain things, and it knows if you're in these little places and what you're looking GPS at. GPS direction. Well, it's just like the refrigerator. Certain hotels don't mess with the stuff inside those refrigerators. Otherwise, you get built. It's all weighted. Yeah, cause it, which took, so even if you put it back. Yeah. Right. But to know, and then all of a sudden it pops up on your phone that you were looking at these shoes. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Anyway, forget about all that technology and enjoy the great outdoors. Can Lost somebody Maples. create an app to get rid of Mountain Cedar? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? There's apps to count it, I'm sure, but. Um, Look at how beautiful this is. Lost Maples State Natural Area on the West Trail. Boy, that's gorgeous. And this is going to be a great weekend if you want to head out into the hill country and just to take a look around and see all those beautiful mountain cedar trees out there in the hill country. Gorgeous sunrise this morning. We do have a few clouds uh, hanging around here. Obviously, we're going to have plenty of sunshine today. 44, Helotus, San Antonio International Airport, Balverde. Port SA, 43 in Bandera, and then you factor in the wind chill. There's a, still a bit of a breeze out there, and so the wind chill feels like 40 here in town. Same thing up the road in Canyon Lake, and wind chill temperatures are down in the 20s in western portions of the hill country as of right now. Winds were stronger overnight, still a bit of a breeze out there this morning, but of course they have uh, enough of a breeze to shake up those trees, and the updated count is going to be coming out or mountain cedar in roughly a half an hour. Uh, we are going to continue to keep some dry air around here, and that's going to increase the fire danger, especially in portions of the hill country with those very low relative humidities. And overnight, we'll have dry air, clear skies, light wind, so that's going to allow temperatures to really drop down. We're going to be about 10 degrees cooler by tomorrow morning. Then southeasterly wind takes over and grabs a hold of all the moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico and brings it on in here. And so the humidity is going to be going up tomorrow afternoon. Clouds are going to be increasing. And we're going to start to see then a chance for some showers overnight tomorrow night into early Thursday morning. So there's the increase in clouds tomorrow night and those few showers around eh, scattered about probably a damp commute on Thursday morning. A few showers around during the day and then we'll see a better chance for a couple of showers on Friday as well as Friday evening even a few thunderstorms. As far as really, really cold air, um, even for International Falls and Caribou, Yes, that's cold, but not as cold as where it's been so far this year. But there's some really cold stuff still brewing up there in Canada. And there are indications that some of that wants to uh, pay a little visit down here. Not until maybe way down the road late next week. For the next couple of days, first of all, there's the front that moved through. And we've got a nice northwesterly flow, beautiful weather for today and tomorrow. Then we get into the southwesterly flow Thursday and Friday increase in the humidity, more clouds, and as the next front approaches, that's going to stir things up and give us that chance for a couple of showers. Best chance of rain is going to be now on Friday and even into Friday evening, even a couple of thunderstorms. 62 degrees today at noon, lots of sunshine out there. We got those few clouds hanging around this morning and then Tomorrow, or excuse me, this afternoon, uh, jumping ahead of myself, 65 degrees with wind out of the southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Still won't be pulling in the humidity yet, but that'll happen tomorrow afternoon. More clouds tomorrow. We start off very cold, though, 34 degrees. Nice big jump in temperatures, though. We gain about 30 throughout the day tomorrow. And then those clouds are going to hold temperatures <laughs> up uh, Thursday morning. We'll only be in about the uh, mid-50s. Starting off Thursday, very warm, mid-70s. Same thing on Friday. A couple of showers Thursday. A little bit better chance of rain Friday. And again, a great weekend. 62 and sunny. We'll take mm -hmm. it. Thanks. 649, 44 degrees. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, how tablets could make learning math fun for your kids. Outside with Lycam as we wake up on this Tuesday morning looking downtown. A little shake to the camera even here in the downtown area. We'll be right back. The greatest of all time. But this is this is big. This week kicks off a competition like none other. If you're our kind of people, just to be able to pit yourself against, you know, the smartest people they could find, the hardest clues, the fastest paced game. It's a it's a real rush. Ken Jennings, Brad Rutter, and James Holzhauer will face off for an ABC special series, Jeopardy: The Greatest of All Time. The three highest earning Jeopardy contestants competing for a million dollar prize. A handsome payday for what could be only three days work, but we hope it'll go longer. 
Fans are happy to see Alex Trebek, who is suffering from cancer, hosting the special show. Jeopardy for the past 36 years has meant my professional life, and it has become almost as important to me as my family. I think just that he's continuing to show up to work every day. He's setting a great example. He's the epitome of the old school broadcaster. Nothing gets in the way of the job. The players have won a combined $10.7 million during their runs on the show. Household name Ken Jennings setting Jeopardy records. Brad Rutter winning the most money in game show history. And Holzhauer bringing the speed with the buzzer. James, of course, hit the world like a cyclone a year and a half ago when he won money faster than any other contestant in history. What is Sarah Lawrence? You the youngest right. of the three excited America when he came close to catching Jennings' Record records. Settings. You're the same age as Jeopardy. Yeah, it's wow. crazy, right? I know. <laughs> These three wise men are adding to their already substantial earnings, but the winner will have special bragging rights as the greatest contestant of all time. The series begins Tuesday, January 7th. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. A northwest side man has found trouble right outside his door. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say he found another man dead there. That resident called police to the Hearthstone Apartments around 2 this morning. He told them he heard noises outside his door, then looked outside and saw the victim down in the parking lot. When officers arrived in the 8800 block of Cinnamon Creek, they determined that victim was dead from gunshot wounds. They did not make any arrest right away. Police also were not able to tell us his name, but they did say that the man who was dead appeared to be in his 30s. Reporting from the Northwest Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMS 89, everyone has a story to tell. As journalists, we often tell the stories of public officials, celebrities, and athletes, but we spotlight our everyday neighbors less often. As changing with our new digital series titled Unheard Essay, gives San Antonians a chance to tell their stories. Coming up at 9, Erica Hernandez will join us for a debrief to explain how she came up with the idea and what we can expect from season one. Let's check traffic right now at 6.55. Well, as we take a look at the roadways, we still have this accident, a uh, major accident being reported. 281 up there, Wilderness Oak area, around uh, just north of Marshall, but it's slowing uh, traffic down in both directions, as you see at one point, southbound 21 in red uh, before you need, right before you reach Wilderness Oak. So keep in mind that f folks are moving a little bit slower through that area due to the major accident. Then uh, southbound 35 at Evans on the right, left-hand shoulder, you do have a stalled vehicle. Folks slowing down for that as well. Just remember, Buckle up and watch that follow distance once you head out. It is chilly out there. We've got a couple of clouds, but a beautiful start to the day. Gorgeous uh, sunrise on tap. We are at uh, 47 degrees right now, so we've warmed up a little bit. 31 up there in Comfort, 44 in Canyon Lake, and there is still a slight bit of a wind chill. We've got a bit of a breeze. Mountain Cedars at 28,000, but the updated count is going to be coming out shortly. We're going to have a high today up to 65, plenty of sunshine. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Have a great day and a great day at school. We'll see you back here at 9.